Um, so she's got a problem. Now that doesn't, I mean, maybe people in the community would have taken care of her, you know. Um, there does seem to be a large crowd there. Maybe someone would have helped her. But, you know, it was not a good situation. The use of the word only son is interesting um, theologically. And I, I'm not, I don't think Luke uses this word uh, for no reason, for no reason, because this title of monogenes, the only begotten, is applied to Jesus himself, is applied to Jesus himself. He is the monogenes to theu. He is God's only begotten son. God has a son, only one son. No, does that does that mean that God is a physical father with a wife who's pumping out kids? No, no, it is not meant in a physical way. It has never been meant in a physical way. Um, it is meant, in, it, but it is meant in a real way that Jesus is God's son in the flesh that there is one only God, okay? There is one only God, but he, there are distinct existences, one might say. Uh, we could say modes of existence, but that can get you into trouble. Um, the word person is used, but that also can be misunderstood as if you're talking about three gods, to say that there are three persons in God. Okay, um, and I know that not everyone taking this course is Christian, and it's not a course on theology, so I, I can't get re really rather very deep into it. But suffice it to say that Jesus talked about himself as if God were his father, and he didn't seem to use that terminology symbolically. You know, like we can all say, well, God is, all, is our, the father of all of us. You know, we're all children of God because, you know, we're all creatures of God. So we can use that familial imagery, that imagery of the human family symbolically since we're all created by God. No. Jesus talked about God like he's my daddy and I know him because I'm his son and he's my father. I know him, i.e. God, in a way that no other human being on this planet knows him or could know him. And that got Jesus into trouble sometimes because, you know, people who were listening to Jesus, actually listening to Jesus, and not just saying, you know, oh, Jesus, you're a great man, you're wonderful, but you know, people who were listening to Jesus said, well, well, what does that mean, Jesus? That God, like, like, are you God too? Are, are you divine in some way too? And Jesus never denied it. And in some cases, he actually said, uh, you're on to something, you're right. And they tried to kill him in those cases for blasphemy. But, okay, I don't, but the, Luke has chosen his word carefully here because another mother nope <laughs> sometimes the rhymes just throw from mr dunn's mouth you know i thought maybe i should be a rapper sometimes you know I, I can't control the poetry people all right so just deal with it because another mother is going to lose her only son and that mother and that woman is going to be mary okay um you know so the readers of these stories are Christians, so they know where the story is going. They know about the death of Jesus, his crucifixion, also that he's raised to life. So when they're reading this story, they're reading this story, they uh, already have in the background the cross and the resurrection. Okay, so you're, you're reading the story in a sense Christologically or Christologically from the vantage point of Jesus. Okay. Anyway, so this only son of his mother. This also is interesting because there are some Christians that believe that Mary, the mother of Jesus, had other children. 
And if she had other children, if Jesus were not her only son, this kind of little double entendre, this double meaning here, doesn't work. It only works if Mary is the mother of one child, her only child, Jesus. When the Lord saw her, and this is interesting that he doesn't say when Jesus saw her, but Luke kind of um, kind of falls back on uh, this believer language, okay? So yes, so Luke is an historian, but he's a believer. So when the master, the Lord, and this is interesting because Luke oftentimes refers to Jesus as the Lord. And for a Jew, for a Jew, the Lord referred to only one person, Almighty God. Okay, when you read the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures, the Lord, the Lord, is Almighty God always, everywhere, without exception. Okay, can the word Lord, Master, etc. be used of human beings? Yes, and it is. Okay, um, so for example, just to give you one example, in uh, the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible, um, the wife of Abraham, Sarah, also called Sarai, she had two, two similar names, she calls her, her husband Abraham Lord, okay, Adona. The Hebrew word is Adon or Adona, okay, which simply means Lord, Master, Ruler, I guess you could say. But when you talk about the Lord, um, every Jew knew who you're talking about. So this is interesting that already at such an early stage, the godly nature of Jesus was seen. He was, he was a man. He acted like, you know, he, he was a man, but at times he did things that only God could do. And this is one of the things that only God could do. Raise the dead. Okay? So Jesus saw her, he was moved with pity and said, Don't cry. Do not weep. The, the Greek here that Luke uses is actually much more expressive than the English. Um, we can express it in English. For some reason, the translators just have not chosen not to. It says he was moved with pity. But actually, the Greek word here means that, says that Jesus was, if you want a very poetic um, definition, you know, moved in his very being would be a way of translating it. If, you were, if you're interested in the Greek, it's, it's not a very uh, sexy word. <laughs> it's splank. Nidzomai, whoops, Splank Nidzomai <laughs> is the Greek word. No, I'm not making that up. Splank Nidzomai is the word. Um, and literally, it means moved in his belly, his guts, a movement in the belly or your guts. You ever think of when, like, you have gas and it feels like, you know, you can feel the movement in your intestines and maybe it causes pain if there's too much gas, okay? In the ancient world, where you know, the ancient Near Eastern world and the Jewish world that Jesus was living in, in their culture, emotions were centered in the gut, not in the heart. The heart was the place of reason the mind. I don't know what the brain was for. <laughs> I'd have to look that one up, okay? But, you know, you have to remember, things are cultural. And in our culture, in Western culture, we place emotions and reason in mainly, like, in the head, you know? And emotions we would put in the heart. Okay, reason would be in the head. Emotions we would put in the heart. Um... 
like we might still put some things like intuition in our in our stomachs like say you know i've got a gut feeling about something and that's kind of intuitive all right but you have to remember this is not this is not western europe this is a totally different culture and so in the culture the near eastern culture of jesus as i said the brain i don't know what the brain was for but the heart was where you thought was the center of reason and your belly was the center of your emotions okay um which is probably why they translated as you know jesus had pity on her jesus felt very emotional um but really jesus was moved in the very um totality of his emotion it, it's a very deep word and i say deep that's not the right word i want to look for a very expressive word okay which tells you just how much jesus kind of reached out to this woman and was not just sympathetic but empathetic for her loss don't cry jesus steps forward and touches the coffin and at this the bearers halted so i guess they were still moving and jesus goes and says you know just touches it to stop them now this is another interesting thing because in jewish belief anything touched by a dead body is considered unclean to touch even going into the house where there is a corpse like for a wake or something um, even to go in there is to make yourself ritually impure unclean now of course to bury the body and to prepare the body for burial you know you just had to do what you had to do okay and later you could take care of your uncleanliness that you know there are ways to do that like you know taking a bath etc and so forth um, so there are ways to take care of that but it made you ritually unclean okay and a dead body was probably the the highest level of uncleanliness of ritual impurity that you could bring upon yourself okay um in fact if you read the the jewish scriptures um for jewish holy men they're specifically told do not enter the house where there's a dead body and in fact priests the priests who ministered in the jewish temple in jerusalem were forbidden forbidden from entering any building where there was a dead body even to walk over the grave of a corpse made you unclean even if you did not know you were doing it let's say someone was buried out in the wilderness you don't even know about it you're just out there hiking camping doing what you want and you just happen to walk over this grave of bones and you don't even know the person's buried there boom you are touched with uncleanliness okay you didn't even know about it that's why in the jewish law there was such an uh one you some people might say an obsession but uh, if i were if you're a believing jew you would say meticulousness about cleansing yourself about washing yourself frequently for both sins that you knew of that you committed and acts of impurity that you did not know of think of this for those of you who are in the medical profession you know you say well this is crazy this is you know but but you know this is nonsense this is nuts you know whatever but excuse me this happens in the medical profession you know before they go into surgery doctors and nurses scrub their arms and their and their and their hands meticulously one might say obsessively why because they don't know if they've touched something where there might be a germ a bacterium and it only takes one little bacterium to get into the person's body cavity to get you to have an infection just because it's religious people doing something for a religious motive doesn't make them a bunch of kooks